Thomas Crothers. And Jay Reed. And Jay, you yes. have been <laughs> you have been brought here for crimes of uh, I was gonna no. say I was gonna say good podcasting, but that is the most un, <laughs> just obscenely cringy. Right. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm definitely obscene. <laughs> We're both obsolete. I feel obsolete yeah. every single day of my life. Um, <laughs> the obsolete man. Yes. Um, now, uh, we can have this conversation now or later. Is this Serling's subtlest work? Oh, I was kind of thinking that when I was watching it. <laughs> um, a very, very Especially at the end. Especially yeah, at the yeah, end. It's so subtle. Yeah. He um, doesn't say anything. That nothing the giveaway. Is on the nose. Just... Yeah. No. Um, no, we, we have talked many, many times about how uh, Serling is, is in many ways, and I mean this is a good thing, write some of the most eloquent and well-written and well-performed on-the-nose material ever. Yeah. And... Again, you've got to look at the medium. You're dealing with 26-minute stories. You're dealing, well, 22 when you take adverts and all that sort of thing. And, and you've got to paint in broad strokes. And yeah. this is an episode that perhaps paints a little bit broader than normal. However, I don't think it feels out of place. There is a very specific yeah. world that Elliot Silverstein, the director, has has placed Serling's uh, script in this, you know, heightened German expressionism. Um, and, I mean, it's made up of it's made up of three scenes. We've got the opening scene, which is incredibly heightened. And then the second mm -hmm. scene, which I actually think is kind of underplayed. The on-the-nose dialogue is still there, but I think it befits the new setting of this, this man's just room. Anyway, we're jumping the gun. Mm -hmm. Had you seen The Obsolete Map? I had not. No. And what was your first reaction after finishing it uh, yesterday? I think this was one of my favourite episodes. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely loved it. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's very obvious what it's about, <laughs> as he says. Um, but I thought Burgess Meredith was is absolutely fantastic in this episode. Yes, our he's, he's so so different from. Time enough at last. Yeah. But then also not. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it is also a book worth, yes. <laughs> so yeah, it is. We, there are four uh, Burgess Meredith episodes. We will only, we have, well, we're finished with Burgess, I'm afraid. Because um, uh, Mr. Dingle the Strong is probably one of the worst episodes. And um, Printer's Devil is pretty good. Um, is it called Printer's Devil? Anyway. Um, it's it's pretty good. It's not the best, and it's also right. series four, so it's needlessly long. Um, but over, but yeah, no, the two, the back to back of time enough at last and obsolete man, and they worked very. Yeah, Prince's Devil. Yeah, uh, where a man sells his soul to the devil to save his failing newspaper and gets more than he bargained for. Um, oh, of yeah. and he's the devil. Um, <laughs> But they work very well as a back-to-back -back pairing. Uh, obviously, you've got the obviousness of Burgess Meredith playing a bookworm in both. This takes it even further and calls him words, <laughs> you know, words. Yeah, he has a words worth your words. <laughs> words, words worth, yes. Um, this is also a return uh, for Fritz Weaver, who we saw last in Third from the Sun, where he was a um, a very shy, uh, very not even shy, sorry, anxious anxiety-ridden scientist trying to escape from Earth. And now he is the awesome. pure... Well, oh, yes, try, not Earth, part of me, yeah, trying to escape to Earth. Um, and that sort of everyman role. And now here he is as 
the unnamed chancellor and it's i mean it's orwell it's fahrenheit 451 it's track the kafka's the trial it's 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 very well trodden ground that mm -hmm. it perfectly befits a, a, a befits a twilight zone and this is written by Sterling. This is uh, what I wrote of um, The Obsolete Man at the time when I did my rankings years ago. Uh, the third incredible turn in The Twilight Zone from Burgess Meredith is another all-time classic episode, owing its debts to the great totalitarian apocalypse text that came before it, whilst also breathing its own life into a story as old as time, climaxing in a truly bitter and inevitable finale, before one of Serling's most profound and elegant closing comments. All in all, this has some of Serling's best text he has ever written. Whether it be melodramatic or heavy-handed or not, this episode serve more, serves more as an expressionistic worst-case scenario rather than one of the realistic episodes of the show. The crux of the episode falls into the hands of a back-and-forth between Meredith and Fritz Weaver. Meredith as a simple librarian titled Obsolete and Weaver as the unnamed Chancellor ruling this didactic horror society with an iron fist both offering truly excellent performances that elevate material already at a supremely high level of quality. Couldn't agree more. I don't think any of those opinions have changed. Yep. Um, I, there is that inevitability to it. It's the, it's less so a twist and and more Ooh. so a, 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 a cat and mouse, a game of wits, a game of intelligence and... and yep who is going to best and there are times did was there ever a moment where you thought that wordsworth was going to best the chancellor and get away with it did you think wordsworth was going to survive or did you always kind of know there was a tragedy at hand yeah i, th I think i was i mean obviously i it's it makes a big deal of the fact that they obviously are all sentenced to die. So, and he's on TV, so mm. I can't. I couldn't really think of a way that he'd get away from it. Mm. But then I think whilst I was watching, I was kind of thinking, um, maybe the bomb won't go off. At yeah, midnight. or maybe, maybe there is no bomb or so. Yeah, but yeah, Serling does say in the opening narration, you know, this in his last forty-eight hours on Earth, and at the time you take that on face value, and by the end of the episode, it is true. Um, but there is an element of Okay, his his um currently it's his last 48 hours on earth. Is the ending gonna be Mr. Ramy, who's now got many more hours on it. And maybe he'll find a book in the other side of way. <laughs> um so this was developed somewhat from two earlier scripts. So Serling before the Twilight Zone um was possibly working on another ensemble, uh, not ensemble, sorry, pardon me. Um Episodic series. No, not episodic. What's it called? Anthology. Serial? Oh. Yeah. Um, and that was uh, had a script where there was a totalitarian society and they uh, cancelled Christmas and cancelled God um, because there was no proof of either. Um, and then also there was the original, original pilot script before they chose to make Where Is Everybody for the pilot episode. Um, which was called The Happy Place. Um, and that mm -hmm. featured an element of people being uh, killed and rendered off uh, once they reached a certain age. Um, speaking of which, rewatched Midsummer at the IMAX. Absolutely astounding. What an incredible, <laughs> incredible, incredible film. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, Elliot Silverstein, as is rather obvious, you can see was heavily influenced visually by the German expressionism and um, movement um, of your, your, your Murnau's and the like and Caligari and that sort of thing. And so he wanted to bring that in. He also had a stage background. And I think that speaks a lot for the stagey um, finale. Um, yes. It, with the, with the, the humming. <laughs> It do, it would feel <laughs> out of place as a Stella Adler exercise. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Or, and maybe it's just the... some expressionist take yeah. on a famous play. Well, you look at the sets of um, Orson Welles's. Um, well, I mean, it's it wasn't called this at the time, but his sort of Hitler Leah, 
which was when he did King, uh, when he did King Lear, but all black and all uh, literally, you know, people talk about that time they did King Lear as Trump in in the park and it it got cancelled or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Wells was like ten years out of the war. <laughs> it was, it was. I'm going to do King Lear, but I'm going to make it all Nazis. Um, <laughs> what a man! Love also Wells. It's the same thing. I've told you the story about my old drama teacher who said, I'm surprised you don't like Orson Welles more, Tov. I, th I think you did tell me it once. I mean, this is, of course, me. Uh, we are on the eve of me heading into writing, directing and starring and producing my own <laughs> play. So mm -hmm. at least I didn't give myself the lead. True, true. True. Good. Next, next Call it the room. Call it the room. Could do, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know that the room he was influenced, Tommy Wiseau, was influenced above all else by the talents of Mr. Ripley? No. And every time I watch the talents I, of Mr. Ripley, I think, wow. I thought, I thought you were about to say that he was influenced by the obsolete man. Uh, oh, no, no. no. That would be far too on topic, Jack. Um, yeah, actually. So we, <laughs> Fritz Weaver based his voice and mannerisms and the like from the McCarthy hearings. Um, and the of course, comment. there you go. And I was watching it. I was watching it with Olivia, and she said, that. "Yeah, <laughs> McCarthy." Uh, I mean, ATA teaching. We so me and Jay. I don't know. Have we ever said this on the pod? Anyway, me and Jay met uh, through the same course, which was specifically American theatre. So if so, does that aid my love of the Twilight Zone? I don't know. I think because I have such a such a knowledge now of that particular political era and an interest in it i do think yeah. in the back of my mind it does it does fuel something um yeah because there are so, elements because obviously these episodes are timeless uh specifically this one in a very dark way um but there is something about how i think we don't look at them as museum pieces no sorry the opposite. We look at them slightly as museum pieces because of the context of the time, and we know the stakes of the time. And I mean, obviously, I know we're reading into Serling and the like, and, and the amount of stuff that he just wasn't able to get on. And it does make you think. In '62, I've got a you know a, a script for Playhouse '90 about the McCarthy hearings. Will he be able to get that on? Probably not at this stage. Can he get the obsolete man on and basically have it be in so many ways McCarthy esque? Yes, and this is what we talk about all the time with the Twilight Zone. Um, yeah. So we meet Wordsworth, and he is brought in Romney Wordsworth. Just another great title, mm -hmm. another great name. What's his name in um, the best the best laid plans of mice and men? And Henry Bemis. Henry Bemis. That's it. Um, um. Another Meredith book where, here we are. <clears throat> you walk into this room at your own risk, because it leads to the future. Not a future that will be, but one that might be. Very positive, Rod. <laughs> Very positive mm -hmm. on that note. Yeah. Um, this is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the super states that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. This is Mr. Romney Wordsworth in his last 48 hours on Earth. He's a citizen of the state, but will soon have to be eliminated because he is built out of flesh and because he has a mind. Mr. Romney Wordsworth, who will draw his last breaths in The Twilight Zone. Did you ever read that? I want to get the real name of it. But I, when I was a kid, they did a, mm -hmm. there was a short story, um, testing kids, kill kids, um, future dispute, the boy gets killed. Yeah, the boy's taken to a test centre. Yeah, what's it called? Got it. Here it is. Brilliant short story. And we read it as a kid. Except all, uh, Dickie Joe, this is the twilight, examination day. Yes. Examination Day by Henry Henry Slessor, um. So I, and it, we read it as we read it as kids, and I was like, "That's brilliant! What a great story!" And it was um a kid who was getting ready for his exam, and mm -hmm. he keeps saying, "Ah, oh, what colour's the sky, Daddy?" 
And he goes, it's red. He goes, all right. And he's like, how many eggs have we got in the fridge, Daddy? And he's counting them. And he goes, well, there's two there and there's two there. So we've got 10, haven't we? And the whole time, the dad's like feeding him shit. And then at the end of it, the, the thing is, he passed he passed the exam and he got all the right answers. And so he has been killed because they live in a society where they get rid of the smart children. Um, right. That's uh, brilliant. Okay. It's just brilliant. What the hell? I don't know. I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. And, um, it, and, and, and we're here again. It's the same thing. You know, since the state has proven that there is no God, you are in error, Mr. Wordsworth. And, 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 and this, this initial back and forth and the, just the complete didactic nature of it and the complete oh. rigor and, you know, words, Mr. Wordsworth. And it's very verbose and it's very well written and it's very eloquent. Oh, baby. And hence, it's so enjoyable to watch. Um, uh -huh. You have no function, Mr. Wordsworth. You are an anachronism, like a ghost from another time. I am nothing more than a reminder to you that you cannot destroy truth by burning pages. Um, obviously taking there from Fahrenheit 451. I haven't read or seen a version of Fahrenheit 451. Have you, Jeff? Nope, I have absolutely not. It's the, the, book, the book burning one. Yeah, I I mean yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah, Julie uh, Julie Christie. Um, I didn't know it was about book burning. Yeah, and it's called the. It was originally called the fire the firemen or something. They're all called firemen. I can't remember. Anyway, um, there is a good. There is apparently a very good film with, with Julie Christie directed by Francois. I believe it's directed by Francois Truffaut. So I should I should have watched that. I should watch. That. <laughs> I know I should watch. I you know I should watch less. If anything, I should watch less. Um, <laughs> choose your own oh yes so interesting elements of the of this society specifically you can choose your own method of death mm. now I mean we're pulling at straws here but why do you think they have that element of the totalitarian society is it is it just the you know the the assembling you know the the presence the semblance sorry of uh, of choice even in your last moments or, or what do you think mm. i think it's i think it's a very half fast attempt to convey that to the people that they're fair yeah but they're not you can choose yeah. electrocution gas <laughs> yes Ooh, hmm, let me think maybe, um, maybe, maybe you could be hung drawn and quartered yes <laughs> You can choose yeah, whether to be hung, like whether it's... to be drawn or quartered. Um, <laughs> and then you see this wonderful light bulb moment for Burgess Meredith. And he goes, oh, so I would like, and he goes through the, the rigor of, of what he wants, which is he wants a secret assassin and he wants the assassin to not know the method of death until it's time and all this sort of thing. And he's, and just that, those wonderful eyes of Burgess Meredith, and you can see everything. And he goes, I would like an audience. And he goes, well, now that can be arranged, Mr. Wordsworth. They have a very educative effect. Um, and, and then again, Meredith, oh, yes, I, I can imagine. Yes, certainly, yes, oh, yes. Um, and then we end up in Romney's house. Um, mm -hmm. Now... Where were you at this stage of the episode? Did, did you think it was going to just continue and be another um, extended scene? Did you think there was going to be less? There was going to be more? What did you think? Uh, what do you mean? I don't know. It was a terrible question. Yeah. I'm a bad interviewer. I, 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 I did think it was going to be a long scene, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of, of them talking in a room. In a room. I think... Which, I want to... Yeah, yeah. Go on. I want to say again how... Being... It did end up being. I want to know again how it does go down a register. Like although the although the language is still at that very heightened eloquence, it does go down a register. And Fritz Weaver and Burgess Meredith do play it softer. And uh, you know anybody who says that there's Fritz Weaver perhaps leans into overacting, I don't think so. Largely because of this middle scene, and um, and again here he's not playing to a crowd. Well, no, he is. Sorry, he is. Part of it. But you're cheating your audience. And, and he's very, you know, I am here to because the state has no fear. This is brilliant. 
setup for what's uh, going to occur. Um, you never learn, do you? History teaches you nothing. On the contrary, history teaches us a great deal. We had predecessors with the right idea. Hitler, <laughs> to play, the, to play this game. It's, yeah. Hitler, I, of course, and Stalin, yes, and Stalin too. I, the, I was not expecting the name drops or him to go, yes, we, they didn't go far enough. Yes, it was simply not was like, going far whoa. enough. Too many undesirables were left around, and undesirables eventually form a reform of resistance. Old people clutch at the past and won't accept the new. The sick, the maimed, the deformed, they fasten onto the health and body and damage it. So we eliminate them. And people like yourself, they can perform no useful function for the state, so we must put an end to them. And originally they wanted, um, I've not got his name, um, but they originally wanted a different actor. And he was Jewish. And it was actually Elliot Silverstein's choice um, to have a more Anglo-Saxon, as he described it, uh, character, so that it, it wasn't specifically, I mean, obviously it's a, an allegory for the Holocaust, but it wasn't mm. specifically just Jews, uh, because he felt that in this case it would have dampened the, the the future of the story. He wanted it to be, everybody can get old, not everybody's Jewish, not everybody's an undesirable in the, in the eyes of, uh, you know, Hitler or any of the uh, any of the uh, dictatorships of the past, but everybody can be old, and so they didn't want to tilt their hand too much. Um, this is when we, of course, learn that the method of liquidation chosen has is a bomb, <laughs> and um, Romney reads his Bible, <clears throat> and you just sit there, and you know, and again, okay, Mister Wordsworth, and he, you know, he's 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 standing proud, and Romney reading the Bible aloud, that you know. The passage of danger, you know, um, gangsters paradise, and yeah, <laughs> and because he is a gangster, so he is. Oh yeah, Romney's a gangster. Somebody needs yeah, to edit is. that TikTok. Um, <laughs> no, they actually do. The thug life. Na 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 na. My method of liquidation is a bomb. Na 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 na. Um. Yeah, is I, I haven't listened to Brat yet, but apparently is Romney Wordsworth no. Brat? Is is Romney Wordsworth gonna have a brat somewhere? No, I don't know, but Carl McLaughlin is Carl McLaughlin is having a brat somewhere, which is excellent. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Dale Cooper is 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 Brat, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, D- Dougie definitely is. Dougie, Dougie, Dougie is the man. We love He's the, the original Brat. <laughs> All in green. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Dougie Jones. Oh, what a man. I am the FBI. Um, <laughs> and and Romney reads his Bible until, of course, the Chancellor breaks down. Please, please, in the name of God, let me out. Uh, yes, in the name of God. And he finally lets <laughs> him out. And that wonderful... The, the... Yes, mm. in the name of God, <laughs> I will let you out. Yeah. But the what we don't see, of course, is the middle hour where he tries to subliminally uh, get him to say it, and he's like, "Hmm, it's getting hot in here." By God, I wish I could open a window, don't you? By God, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, it's all right, Mister Wizard. God, I wish I wasn't dying. God, I really, you know, <laughs> really mm. wish it wasn't that bad in here, don't you? That, By- yeah, just an entire hour of him. Trying to make him say God. Like then, Darren Brown. I'm gonna try I'm yeah. gonna make you think of an animal, giraffe. I'm gonna make you think of an animal. It's going to be big and big and yellow. I'm gonna think of an animal. You're not gonna I'm not gonna subliminally say giraffe. I'm not going to get you to uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> um and then um the next day the Chancellor arrives, he's got his little he's got his little papers, he's ready for the day mm-hmm. of work. Stand there. <laughs> you have been rendered. Obsolete. And did you notice that Joseph uh, Plick um, talks in a weird monotone accent in this moment? Um, yeah, he sounded yeah. weird. <laughs> it was like, and you have been rendered obsolete. It's like, okay, interesting. If that's how they all talk, but Fritz Weaver doesn't. Uh, but again, I funny. can't. I can't imagine a whole episode of Fritz Weaver talking like a robot. Um, yeah. And then, then we get the chanting chorus of obsolete. Obsolete, obsolete, 
and then they pounce on him like the Jets and the Sharks, and they're all circling mm-hmm. and the noise. Mm. And then, and then, how do they kill him? They um, throw him down a table like a bowling ball, uh, and then mm. they, uh, and then we fade to Rod Serling. Yeah. Um, he goes, yep. And then he goes, yep, he's dead. <laughs> says, the Chancellor, the late Chancellor, uh, was only partly correct. He was obsolete, but so is the state. The entity he worshipped, any state, any entity, any ideology which fails to recognize the worth, dignity, the rights of man, that state is obsolete. A case to be filed under M for mankind in the Twilight Zone. And I see that on Twitter all the time and, and Facebook. That is one of the, that and the ending for He's Alive, Dennis. Uh, Hopper, um, both have concluding speeches about the state of, really blatantly about the state of the world, and they get shared a lot. It was actually longer originally. In the original script, uh, there was a bit in the middle. Any state, Mm -hmm. any entity, our ideology becomes obsolete when it stockpiles the wrong weapons, when it captures territories but not minds, when it enslaves millions but convinces nobody, when it is naked, yet puts on armor and calls it faith, while in the eyes of God, it has no faith at all. So very blunt. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I dare say the, the swifter version that we get in the film, in the in the, in the the episode, is, is is swifter and a little bit better. Um, June mm-hmm. the 2nd, 1961, this was the, um, the, fina- the finale of Series 2? I believe so, yeah. I believe we're doing two finales yeah, back to uh, back. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, right then. So our rankings. Let me mm-hmm. send the ranking to you. Do, 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 do. I'll look at it on my phone. Rankings. Oh. I'm on Letterbox now, Jay. I oh, oh no, yeah. it's fine. Um, Jay, here we are. Uh, the obsolete man. So you you loved it. I really like it. I think it's up there. I um, so well. It's better than Nick of Time. I think it's better than yep. the cat, the cat lady of perchance to dream. Mm-hmm. Now here's an interesting one. We've got the silence and this both episodes where two people, well, I nearly said speak for a very long time, but infamously, <laughs> <laughs> um, these sort of. Do you prefer Obsolete Man to the Silence? I think I do. Yes. And what about the masks? Um, I know which episode it is. I'm just trying. I think. Uh, hmm. What do you think? I'm happy with it. I think obsolete man at at eleven. The masks now at twelve. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I think don't. It's better, it's... But it's not. I, I, I still put it below Nightmare like, at twenty thousand. Oh yeah, it's not cracking the. It's not cracking the top ten. I wonder. We had that. Me and Will had this with our Sundown rankings. I wonder when will be the song. When what will be the episode that now cracks the top ten? And I think. Yeah. I mean, our, ne- our very next episode that we're doing is the After Hours, which yeah. is an absolute all-timer. So, oh yeah, precariously. Pl- I think. Well, I think we're immediately going to get to top ten territory. Well, Jay, that was absolutely delightful. Uh, what a wonderful yeah. episode, and uh, what a wonderful uh, man you are. Um, right. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> have a good day, Jay, and Auf Wiedersehen. Easy.